so I thought I was done, but as promised, uh, there is a bonus uh, lesson, and that is importing point data from Excel. So this is whenever you've got a list of coordinates from whatever source, this could be from a data search, it could be from a uh bat detector that's um got all of your individual bat calls or, or have got uh have got uh coordinates associated with them uh any data that has a list so say i've got i've just created some dummy data here um so if we take a look at this it's got no contextual data. It's basically just a list of points and a list of coordinates for it. And come on, load up. Okay, computer's not frozen. Don't know why it's not loading. Let's try actually clicking on it. That might help. So just got some dummy data here. We've got 12 points with grid references. Um, we've also got Easting and Northing XY coordinates, which are basically just the completely numerical versions of the grid reference. We've also got latitude and longitude data. Um, if all you have is your grid references, and you want to convert them over a very very useful website is grid reference finder which is where i've just created this dummy data what you need to do come down to the bottom coordinate batch conversion tool click that be brought to a second separate screen you paste in your coordinates you tell them it's a grid reference uh, you tell them which column, if it's got multiple columns, your actual um, grid reference is contained in. A few other options about what's it separated by. Click convert. Tells you we've got 12 records without errors. And this is our data converted. We can just click on it, copy it, and then bring that back into Excel, cut and paste, and then that basically just gives you all the different converted styles of the data. But we already have that, so I'm just gonna delete it. So, back to QGIS, which I thought I was done with for the day. Um, we wanna add a layer. We actually want to add a layer now instead of creating a layer. And it is a, my brain has gone blank. Where's the option that I'm looking for? Add delimited text layer, click on there. Find where your layer is. I didn't mention that this is saved as a CSV file and not as an Excel file. That's important, save it as a CSV file. Anyway, select our file, open that up. Uh, the first record has field names, yes it does. It's detecting field types, it is, and it's kind of uh, auto-populated these, but it's done it wrong. So we're gonna ignore that. It's a CSV file, yes, that's fine. Point coordinates, it is. X field is X easting, Y field is Y northing. We've got no Z and M data, so that's elevation and height data. And the geometry coordinate reference system is British National Grid. So that's all, and then you'll get a preview of the data down here as well. I'll just cover one thing right now but I'm not actually going to continue on with it at this point. I'll just mention it. If we were doing data from a GPS unit or a bat detector that was only giving you latitude and longitude, you have two options. Um, 
you can convert them in the batch coordinate system that we just used on Grid Reference Finder, or we could do it directly here. Instead of Eastings, you would choose Longitude, not Latitude. And for the Y, it would be Latitude. We would also then have to choose a different coordinate reference system, which is this one here, the EPSG 4326 WGS84, and that would create a layer that would have um, latitude and longitude uh, data in it. If you did that and forgot to change that and put it in this British National Grid, it wouldn't work. Uh, these are not exchangeable. These are meters from a point of origin. These are degrees from a point of origin. If you mess up the coordinate reference system, you'll get very wrong answers. So let's change these back anyway. It's Eastings for the X, Novings for the Y. And now we're going to add that data. Click Add. And that data should now be shown on our map. Let's put it in group one. So it won't show because that's not selected. I'm going to bring it out of that group and just put it here. Let's just get rid of our habitat data as well. And let's just plot it over our base map. Let's make it a little bit more visible as well. Actually, no, the first thing that we're going to do. So as you can see, when we click on this layer, we don't have the option to toggle editing because this is not a shape file. This is a non -ed editable layer. You cannot change these points at all. Say your GPS unit was having a bit of a wobbly and it plotted it in the wrong place. Or you wanted to add data because say you want a bat transect and you had some bat activity that wasn't logged by your bat detector. So you didn't actually have a point for it. You need to export this as a shape file. Let's pretend this is bat data. Let's call it bat data. I'm going to save that. It's the right coordinate reference system. And we're going to click OK. That's now added that to the layer. And you can see now we can edit that layer. Like I said, you can add points. You can take points away. Um, you've got more flexibility with it once you actually create it, change it into a point layer than the actual original CSV data. If you don't need to make any edits, then don't worry about it. But if you are, then changing it to an actual shape file layer of point data is a much better way of doing it. Well, it's the only way to do it. It's not a much better way of doing it. It's the only way. Again, you can change the symbology of these. You can even download some CSV kind of icons that show pictures of bats if you want, or not really a professional looking map it would be then. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's just put some uh, airplanes on the map. I don't like want black ones. I want a different color airplane. No, that's not going to change a lot. <laughs> Let's just leave it as black. Let's have some black aeroplanes on our map. There we go. Here are all our bats. Could be bat boxes, could be badger set locations, could be anything. Can do labeling in the same way as you would as well. So we'll find a what we got for labels. I think there's just title here. Yeah. So that was basically just the number for the label. Could be a bat species. It could be, um, it could be anything. I'm running out of imagination to be perfectly honest, <laughs> but yeah, you can label it, you can edit it, you can format it. Um, they are, there are kind of advanced things you can do with point maps when you've got a lot of points together. Things like heat maps and point displacement maps beyond the scope of today. Not basic stuff. But if you were just wanting to look at basic data, 
uh, if you're looking at sort of like um, distribution data that you've got back from a data search, then this could be a way of doing that. Um, I will add one warning to looking at um, point data from record searches, and I'm going to have to open. Uh, you go away. <clears throat> Looking for something that says grid reference demo. There we go. Grid reference demo. This is one thing that a lot of people forget about when they're dealing with point data. It's displayed as a point. But a point on a map, especially when it comes from a grid reference location, is not a point at all. Ignore this. Oh. Ignore everything I'm just about to do. <laughs> I need to reproject this into a different... Because this is grid reference it's not grid reference data right so this is data from google maps i told you before that sometimes it's problematic you've just seen had a very small sample of that kind of problem anyway grid reference data grid reference location of sj will plot as this here what sj really means is somewhere within this area it's not just a single point it means somewhere within this 100,000 meter square um, again going slightly smaller if we go for SJ 55 we've reduced that down to a 10,000 uh, meter area SJ 5555 that's now into a thousand meter area SJ555, 555. I've went for the middle of each square. That's why it's all fives. Um, again, is a 100 meter area. SJ555, 555, 10 meter area. And then all the way down to this one here takes you to a one meter area. The message here that I'm trying to say is if you are dealing with. Um, not a full kind of 10 12 digit grid reference you're likely to be dealing with an area um, a large area that that actual data record is within rather than just a single point on a map um, so when you've only got a when you've got a something that's giving you sort of like a 100 meter uh, grid reference and this is your site boundary it could be on the site it could be off the site um, it could be within 30 meters of the site it could be kind of a kilometer away from the site depending on the scale of what you're working to with that grid reference so just be careful with that right I think that now is me done. I did promise this point data import thing. Uh, that's it delivered. Uh, nothing more to say apart from uh, stay at home, stay healthy and uh, stay sane everyone. Uh, thank you and goodbye.